You know, I was telling my therapist today, I said, you know, black men really hurt me the most. And I support black and Latin men heavily on my page, on social media, especially my Instagram. You see them, I find them, I post them. Beautiful, uplifting, beautiful black and Latin men. But I don't trust them to not break my heart. I don't trust them to not have an ulterior motive because they see that I am worth money. So, and that, you know, people respect me. I don't trust them to not be opportunists. I don't trust them to be monogamous and devoted to me. And every time I think I want to be monogamous and devoted to one of them, I draw back out of fear because it's like, well, you're not going to do me right anyway. And what I said to my therapist is all of this just further reminds me that my innocence was taken at eight years old when I was raped and molested. It was taken. And now my adult relationships suffer so bad because I don't trust men. I don't trust men. The only man I trust is myself. I don't trust them. I fear them. I fear what they're capable of. Violence, heartbreak, disappointment, vengeance, evil, brutality, murder. I don't trust them. I don't trust a man, especially my own black and Latin melanated men to not be up to some fuck shit when they're dealing with me. You see, yeah, mama's got a purse and mama's got some coins and I got to do everything I can to hold on to my coins because literally these black and Latin men, they looking for an opportunity. And if they can get into my purse strings by climbing into my bed, they will. So what do I do? Nine years of the celibacy come August. You're not climbing into my bed. So now what you going to do? You're not going to be able to give me your dick and that's going to be okay. Your ass and that's going to be okay. And that's going to be enough. I'm, a, I'm supposed to absolve you and release you from all other obligations in life just because you can throw ass at me, dick at me, head at me. Huh. No, ma'am, Miss Pam. No, ma'am. So as I continued to talk to my therapist, I got really angry because I was like, I cannot love the thing that brutalized me the most in my life. I am gay. And I cannot love men because they have hurt me so deeply in my life. I can't. It's what keeps me alone. It's what keeps me, and sadly, it's what keeps me the way that I am. I'm not having sex right now. I really don't even know if I want to have sex with another man again because the statistic says one in two African-American gay men is HIV positive. The statistic is so high. 50% of the community has HIV. I've worked too hard at becoming who I am to become careless and reckless. And my thing is every person that got HIV wasn't being reckless and careless. No, let's get that together. They just trusted the wrong person. They just trusted the wrong person. So me having trust issues, I'm not about to go out there and trust the wrong person. I, I would have a bullseye, a target on my back if I did that. I wouldn't survive. I would be taken out immediately. You trusted the wrong person. So now I only trust myself when it comes to men. I don't want them to be my slaves. I don't want them to be anything to me. But what me and my therapist came to the conclusion was I have been traumatized by men. And at almost 39 years of age, it's just, it's just a little too late. It's just a little too late. I'm used to being a sexual object to men and having them be a sexual object to me. I'm used to that. That is the role that so many men wanted me to play. 
And I really did not want to play it. I wanted the man and figured if I could go along with what he wanted, then he would give me his heart, his monogamy, his, his exclusivity. But he didn't. None of them did. It just wasn't in the cards. It just wasn't in the cards. Because they're running around with their own trauma. They run around with their own trauma. I go from, like I said, hyposexuality to hypersexuality. There's no middle ground. I want to be sexual because I have a high sex drive to this day. Nine years of celibacy and I have a high sex drive. I just bought some sex toys. They should be here soon. But um, I want to be. But there's so much to consider. I'm not the same person that I was before. And I have so much value now. I have so much value. So my therapist was like, well, what, what do you feel? We, we talked about the anger iceberg. That anger is just the tip of the iceberg, but underneath the water, there are so many emotions, sadness, betrayal, embarrassment, jealousy, envy, hatred, frustration, hurt. And she asked me because she saw me get angry. And she said, what are you feeling? I said, I'm hurt, I'm embarrassed, I'm angry. I literally saw the same man for eight years. We had a standing Monday appointment. Fuck like rabbits on Monday. I didn't want to sleep with anybody else but him. I enjoyed being with him. And I was good enough to fuck every Monday for eight years. But not good enough to become his lover or partner. And guess what? I don't blame him for that. That was my fault. Because if he was taking advantage of me, and he was, I should have said something. I should have done something. But I didn't because love will make you do some crazy things. Or what you believe is love. And it even got so bad to where he would do things and I would get mad at him. And he would say, oh, you're not going to stay mad at me. And I'd say, why? He'd say, because you love me. So he would use that against me. So as I talked about that in therapy today, I realized something. Going back to my childhood and having it be so traumatic, having an uncle tell me that I was gonna get HIV and AIDS, scaring the fucking daylights out of me. I realized something about the way that I was treated, not only by my family, but by these men, by the world, by everyone who misunderstood me. They owe me an apology. These people owe me an apology. All these people that ever wronged me owe me an apology. And when I realized that in therapy just a few moments ago, I started to cry. Because I realized my family, everybody, the church, everybody owes me an apology. Because the problem wasn't me problem was them and I see that now I realize that now and my therapist said that's the first step to healing is to acknowledge and to see and to realize that the problem isn't you sometimes it's the other people but you keep me kind hearted I kept letting them off the hook I kept letting them off the hook I kept letting them go free well now you don't get to go free my family owes me an apology everybody everybody that was my friend owes me an apology The people I've dealt with in my life, y'all owe me an apology. And guess what? I will never get it. And I know that. And that's fine. You don't have to apologize to me. But you owe me one. And that knowledge, the knowledge of knowing that you owe me an apology, frees me.